So now that you reviewed a few lesser known bad games, why don't you review a really well known bad game? I guess I could. What would you suggest? Final Fantasy Mystic Quest! What? That's not a bad game. But lots of people say it's a terrible game! I doubt a lot of those people have even played that game. But a lot of them probably have! Okay, but even so, they're probably not looking at the game with the correct mindset. Some 30-year-old man ranting about a game made for 8-year-olds, and saying how it doesn't have an epic story like Final Fantasy IV or VI, is kind of missing the point. So, you're not going to review it? No, I want to review it. Let's redeem this game. I don't think Mystic Quest deserves the reputation it has received in the gaming community. In this video, we are delving deeply into one of the fondest memories of my childhood. There are a lot of Final Fantasy fans who have unspeakable hatred for Mystic Quest, but I personally liked it. While it's not the first computer RPG I ever played, it's the first Final Fantasy game I ever played. I rented it at a local mom and pop video store in my hometown and beat it by the end of the weekend. I enjoyed it enough that I rented Final Fantasy IV and from then on I was hooked on console style RPGs for the rest of my childhood. Final Fantasy VI, Lufia 1 and 2, Chrono Trigger, Earthbound, Fantasy Star 4, and Super Mario RPG, I may never have played these games if I hadn't first experienced Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, because my earlier computer RPG experiences on the console were Wizardry and Dragon Warrior, and I'll admit, I didn't really like either of them when I was a kid because I didn't have the patience for the run over the place like a lost puppy gameplay they thrived on. That means this show that you've been watching, The RPG Fanatic, probably wouldn't have existed if Square never made Mystic Quest. Anyway, there is a lot of misinformation about this game, and I think this misinformation contributes to the hatred the game receives. So off the top, let's clear up a few things. Firstly, this game was not created by Square USA Incorporated, the American development branch of Square, like Secret of Evermore had been. Mystic Quest was developed by an entirely Japanese team. All of the people involved had worked on Saga 3. Secondly, this game did not reuse the same engine from Saga 3. Game Boy and Super Nintendo games use different programming languages. People get the idea that it's easy to port console games between different consoles because they assume all games are programmed in C. This is totally false. When you use compilers, the final product tends to have a lot of excessive code. A general rule of thumb is that something programmed in C will generate 10 times as many lines of code as something directly programmed in an assembly language. While Square eventually started using compilers like Sigil, to program their Super NES titles. Because of the limited memory space on game cartridges of the day, it was very inefficient to use compilers to program Game Boy and Nintendo games. There are other issues to consider too. A poorly coded Game Boy game can actually drain the batteries faster than normal by improperly enabling things like double speed mode and the infrared sensors when they aren't needed to be on. There are people who believe that the Super Nintendo uses the same assembly language as the Game Boy because of devices like the Super Game Boy, which allow Game Boy games to be played on a Super NES. However, that's not actually what is happening. The Super Game Boy is basically just a modified Game Boy. The only hardware on the Super NES that it utilizes is the soundboard, the power board, and the controller port, and the video out ports. In summary, although Mystic Quest has a lot of similar game mechanics to Saga 3, and even reuses some of the graphics from that game, Mystic Quest had to be programmed from scratch. The third major misconception people have is that Mystic Quest served no purpose but to cash in on the Final Fantasy name. Some reviewers point out that Final Fantasy games were well received by reviewers in gaming magazines, but the truth is that computer RPGs sold poorly in North America compared to games in other genres. Mystic Quest was designed to introduce North American kids to the genre and get them to check out other Final Fantasy titles. The fourth misconception is that Final Fantasy Mystic Quest is a poorly designed game and doesn't really have any story. The plot of the game is pretty standard fantasy fare. Something horrible has gone wrong with the tower that protects the world, or, or something. A random wizard appoints the hero Benjamin to go on a quest to defend the crystals and save the world. Ben meets other characters who quickly join up with him, often for inexplicable reasons, but hey, this game was designed to appeal to young children, so dialogue is kept to a minimum. But I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The narrative reads like the author clearly didn't care about plot development, and the characters pretty much have no personality. Something that is good about the story is that the game starts out in the midst of action. There's no lengthy backstory to watch or creation arc where the hero goes about his daily life until the call to action. A lot of console-style RPGs tend to have these prologue arcs. 
and they tend to bore me a lot because it generally takes 10 minutes until you can actually find out what the gameplay is like. Since we're on the subject of gameplay, let's talk about the combat. The game uses a turn-based combat system that seems to be a heavily watered-down version of the combat system used in Saga 3. The biggest difference is you can only have one party member with you at a time, and they are controlled by the game's AI by default, but the game options allow you to choose to manually control their actions. The second big difference is that spells are divided into schools of wizard, white, and black magic, and each school has their own spell points rather than sharing a pool of generic magic points. Graphically, small little changes have been made to the Saga sprites. A monster's graphics change depending on how much damage they have taken, to give a visual cue to how much progress the player is making toward defeating them. And if you happen to die in a battle, you can still be restarted and try to use better tactics. Let's talk about the music. The music is pretty damn awesome. Hell, the regular battle music is just as epic, maybe even more so, than any battle theme featured in a numbered Final Fantasy game. Bad battle music is too soft or repetitive, and makes you want to fall asleep. The music in Mystic Quest rocks out, making it harder to do so, which is really important since there isn't much depth to its gameplay. While we're on the subject, Another nice touch is the option to display HP using a more traditional life meter, rather than simply display the hit points as a numerical value. As an adult, I prefer to see the numbers, but as a child I preferred the life meter because it was more familiar to me. The inventory menu is divided into usable items, weapons, and armor. Rather than read through a long list of text, the player need only select from a small number of graphical icons to equip or use items. Again, this kind of inventory system GUI is really ideal for children who are new to the genre. Also, like the early Dragon Quest games, characters automatically equip their strongest armor. Ben can also use weapons on the dungeon maps to navigate terrain, and he can also jump and push objects. I imagine these puzzle elements were added to make the game more appealing to kids, since the most popular Super NES titles of the day, like The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, had a heavy emphasis on puzzle-solving gameplay. Though random battles were normally part of Final Fantasy games, there are none in Mystic Quest, making dungeons less frustrating to navigate as you don't get into a battle with every other step. For those who want to grind, there are battleground maps on the overworld that allow you to do so. The overworld map only allows the player to travel on a predetermined route, much like the overworld map in Super Mario Bros. 3 and Super Mario World. I think this is a good change considering when I first played Dragon Quest as a child, I was turned off by the need to randomly search the overworld map for the place I needed to go. And the game also has no save points. If you want to save, you can do so from anywhere in the game at any time. When you look at all these elements together, sure, the game is really easy. But it's supposed to be. Mystic Quest was designed to convince children to play turn-based combat games, which, really, hadn't been very popular in North America, and inevitably didn't become very popular until Final Fantasy VII came out in 1997. As for the last remaining common criticism, that it has no Final Fantasy series elements, well, I totally disagree. The storyline revolves around crystals of different elements, just like prior Final Fantasy games did. Many of the series' staple enemies and items also appear, as do the Final Fantasy magic spells. As far as I'm concerned, Mystic Quest did exactly what it was designed to do, encourage children to play more turn-based computer RPGs. Personally, I may never have played Final Fantasy IV if I had never played Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, because I usually avoided sequel games unless I had played the first one. I mistakenly thought Mystic Quest was the first, but because of that I was able to discover four. So Mystic Quest is the game that set me on the path of becoming the RPG fanatic. So really, how bad can it be? Well, this has been my review for Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Hopefully I've convinced some of you guys that it's not as bad of a game as people make it out to be. I still think the game sucks donkey balls. Yeah? Well, nobody cares what you think.